Hey guys, so in this demo, we're going to talk about how do you build a very, very simple web page and what that entails in terms of HTML and CSS. So we talked a little bit in the lecture about um, what HTML and CSS is, but here's a quick recap that HTML is the content, CSS is the form. What does that look like in practice? So first, we're going to look at what is using an ID. We're going to look at what is the structure of a web page, what are different HTML elements, what kind of attributes you can put into these elements, and then looking at specific ones like head, body, P, which stands for paragraph, H1, which stands for header, IMG, which stands for image. And then we'll move on to CSS and look at selectors and attributes and values. And much, much more, maybe. But let's get started with an ID. An ID is an integrated development environment. Environment. Let's make this. Yay. You could have downloaded something like Sublime or Atom or Visual Studio. Um, I'm going to use Atom for this video. Essentially, they're all the same. So. I'm going to open Atom, and here I have my ID. Essentially, an ID or an integrated development environment is nothing more than a glorified text editor. Because you guys could be writing your essays in Notepad, right? You could just be writing it in like the most basic, basic text editor. But it's nice to have a software that allows you to like center or to have like bigger fonts and to have spaces to insert images all these things and that's what Microsoft Word is or this is what OpenOffice is this is what Apple Pages is um, and an ID is the equivalent for code so we could be writing code in something like this right but we'll see that it can be very 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 painful um, an ID just makes it a lot easier for us um, to to write and to debug code so an example of that is if I want to write um, HTML code, we have a basic, basic, basic um, element, which is HTML. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, nice and big. Cool. All gray, all normal, whatever. The first thing that I'm going to do, and the thing that we should always, always, always be doing whenever you're um, working on software or working on anything, is saving. So we're going to save our work. We're going to click File, Save. And I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder called comlab1. And then I'm going to save it as index.html. So those two things are actually important. Index is, a, is an agreed upon name for what is the default web page. So when you're going to like google.com, for example, or rather like duckduckgo.com, where we're actually going is duckduckgo.com slash index.html. And if I go there, I end up on the same page, right? So index.html is always the first page that your browser is going to be looking for. So this is why we call it index. .html is the extension which says, hey, this is actually an HTML file. It's not a text file, it's not a doc file, it's not any other kind of file, it's an HTML file. And our ID is going to recognize that. So when I click save, bam, this becomes red. Because then now the ID knows that like, hey, this thing is actually HTML. I know how to kind of deal with HTML. I know that these symbols are special. I know that this is also of some kind of importance, and therefore I'm going to highlight it for you. Very nice. So what's the first thing we do when we open up a tag like this? First thing we do is that we close it. And we close a tag by adding this guy, the slash. So without a slash is an open tag, with a slash is a closed tag. And inside all of these guys is where it's going to be our HTML code. 
So HTML elements have a particular pattern, right? We've seen the first pattern is they're open and they're closed. Then they have a name. It's the name of the element here is HTML. And then they can have um, attributes. So we could have something like HTML type equals low. And you see how this thing changes color? This doesn't mean anything, right? But the ID knows, hey, this is an attribute. This is the value of an attribute. That's very helpful. We'll see why later on. So we have our HTML tag. This is where we're going to write everything. So you know what? I'm just going to say, hello, just checking if this works. Cool. So how do we open this? We saved it, and we saved it here in not desktop com lab. So I'm going to go on my desktop here, and inside the comlab1 folder, I have an index.html. I click on it. Bam. Now my browser is open, and I see this. Cool. Great. Amazing. The first question is that maybe we don't want all of our website to just be in this like default times new Roman fault, right? We want to have some um, elements that are more interesting. So we're going to go back to our ID and we're going to say that we actually need to follow the structure of the HTML document. And so the very basic structure of an HTML document is that it has a head. And you see how like I typed head and it closed it immediately for me? That's also what IDEs do. Um, that they know, hey, this is an open tag. You probably want to have a closed tag. There's absolutely no reason why you don't want to have a closed tag. And so it clears the closed tag for us. So we have the head. And the second part is the body. OK? This is the roughest possible structure of an HTML document. This is what all of the HTML documents need to have. OK? What goes in this line, on line number three here, are all of the um, sort of what we call metadata. So it's not exactly what people are going to see or what your visitors are going to see on your website, but it's going to be the things that your website is going to use in order to make it more accessible to your user or to have a better experience. One example of that is the title tag. So if I say title and I say hello, and you see this little blue thing here? This guy right there. That means the document is not saved. And if I um, press Command S or Control S or click File, Save, this guy disappears. So it's a nice way to know if your document is saved or not. Most of the mistakes that um, software developers do is that they try to do something and they're like, oh man, that doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? And they try and they refresh and blah, blah. They didn't save the file. So it becomes sort of like a second nature of whenever you see the blue dot, you don't want to see the blue dot, you save it. At least you know that what you're seeing in the browser here is the same thing that you have here. OK? So now to see the changes that I've done, I'm just going to refresh the browser. So I, click, I can click on Refresh here, or I can do Command-R to reload. So I click on, re on Refresh, and now it's gone. Right? It's gone because we don't have anything in our body. But one thing that appeared is this guy here. Hello. And that's what we've written in our title tab. Really? Really. Cool. So that's our head element. We'll come back to the head element when we talk about CSS and JavaScript. But for now, all of the HTML goes here. And let's say, actually, I just want to note for myself, and I want to say all of the HTML goes here. Okay, so that I can remember in my file 
this is where I should write the HTML. If I go back to the browser and I refresh, now I see all of the HTML goes here. I don't actually want to see it, right? I just wanted to keep it as a note for myself and have all the clean, beautiful content on that web page without the notes. So to do that, we have these things called comments. And comments are a special way of marking that this text should be ignored by whatever software is interpreting it. And in HTML, it goes like this. It goes opening caret, exclamation mark, dash, dash, space. And then we close it, dash, dash, closing caret. And now we see that all of this is gray and the rest of our code still nice and colorful. I go back, I reload, pew, now it's gone. So now it's just a comment for us when we're developing and it doesn't have to appear right there. I'm gonna use that a lot in those um, videos. And because I don't wanna write the opening caret, the exclamation mark, the dash dash, and then dash dash and closing caret, there's a shortcut for that. And the shortcut is going to be command plus slash or control plus slash. So now if I press it right now, I do command slash, bam, turns into a comment. If I press command slash again, it goes back to being normal. So now when you guys see me writing this, these means are just these are just comments. They're just for us to understand better what is going on. Okay, now let's get to it. The very basic um, HTML element is going to be the P tag. So I press P and it tells me that this is a paragraph. I open the caret, close the caret, I have my tag. This is my greeting to you. I save it, I go to the browser, I reload it, bam, this is my greeting to you. Amazing. But this isn't really what we want, right? We kind of want to have like an introduction, like a title, um, and then we want to have our text. The tag for titles is this thing called H. It's called heading, heading one, two, three, four, five, six. What does it actually mean? It means that the lower the number, the bigger the heading. H1 is massive. Refresh, bam, is massive. Let's say H1 is massive, actually. Yeah. And then we can do H2. H2 is a little less massive. Go back, reload. H2 is a little less massive. And then let's do the last one, H6. How big is H6? I don't actually know. I rarely use, rarely use H6. We refresh. Oh, H6 is tiny, super, super tiny. So you see that H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6 are just different sizes um, of headings, of titles. So let's just keep H1 for now. And let's just say, welcome. Cool. Refresh. Welcome, this is my greeting to you. Amazing. So now, we've looked at the basic um, HTML elements. We've looked at attributes, this weird thing that becomes colored, which we'll talk into a little bit more. Before we do IMG, you know what? Let's do the basics of the web. A. What is the basics of the web, you ask? It's a link, right? The web is just a collection of links on which you click and you click and you click and you get lost. Um, and you find sometimes amazing things, sometimes less amazing things. The way that a link is structured in an HTML document is like this. Opening caret A. What does A mean? It means anchor. So it's like an anchor from one page to another. Start from the anchor, go to the next anchor. And then if we go to the next anchor, we kind of want to know where we're going, right? And that's called href. And href means 
hypertext reference. So HTML means hypertext markup language, HTTP means hypertext transfer pro protocol, it's all about hypertext. href is which hyperlink do we want to go to. Where do we want to go? Um, let's go to https colon slash slash duck duck go dot com. Cool. And that's nice actually. You see how like that link was um, highlighted by, to, for us by the ID. And then we close it. And then we say click here. So far, so good. We go back to our browser. We reload. Bam. Now we have click here. And if I click on it, I'm on DuckDuckGo. Amazing. Everything works as, expe as expected. We go back, and we're back to our web page. So this is a little more complicated in terms of HTML elements. The A is still the name. Like the guy you see here, that's the name of the element. Okay. The orange thing, the orange thing is called an attribute. Any orange thing that we put inside elements are going to be called attributes. The orange thing is the attribute. Okay, and then an attribute needs to have a value. Let's say like all humans have eyes, that's the attribute. What's the value? The value is going to be the color of the eyes, right? And that value goes inside the quotes here. So we want to say, where do we want to go? What's the hypertext reference? We want to go to this website. That's the value. OK. So our elements have a name, an attribute, and a value. So far, so good. So now, how about we want to put an image. How does one put an image? Images are a little bit different because they're actually written like this. They have a slash at the end. And these are called self-closing elements, I think. Something like this. Exact terminology doesn't really matter. The point is that they close themselves. They don't need an opening and a closing one. So we're going to go to the end of the line create a new line and now we want to have an image and we're going to say open image and close okay and now I'm gonna go back I'm gonna reload and there's nothing right because we're saying we want to display an image we're not saying which image we want to display hmm okay so now we need to find an image the way we tell what image it should be displayed is kind of like this, right? You remember the orange thing is the, the attribute? We want to have another attribute, but this time it's called SRC for source. Like what, what source should it use to display the image? And then we need to give it a value, so we're going to press equal and double quotes. This is where we're going to put the name of our image. But which image we want to use? Right. Let's say I'm going to go to my images, uh, pictures, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Any, any interesting screenshots, 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 screenshots. Test pattern. Ooh, that's intense. Teapot. Teapots are good. Um... Unity scene. Ooh, this one's really nice. Yeah, the VR Buddha. Cool. Let's do the VR Buddha. So this guy is called VR underscore Buddha dot PNG. Okay. So I'm going to put VR underscore Buddha dot PNG. I save it. I reload. And now it says, hey, it's broken. Like you remember that icon from the internet it means you can't actually find the image. This is the correct name, right? It is the correct name, but what goes inside the attribute is not the name of the file. It's the path of the file. Okay, so where can we find this file? 
and what we're saying here is, hey, this your index.html in the same folder where you are, there should be a file called vrboda.png. Okay, and so now we open the folder, and there's no such thing, no such thing as the vrboda. And this is why our image here is broken. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna copy, and I'm gonna paste the image there. Cool. And now I'm gonna refresh it, and now we have the VR Buddha. Amazing, because it knows that inside the folder there's an image called VR Buddha, and this is what it should be displaying. To highlight this a little better, let's create a folder in which we're going to put all our images. So I create a new folder, call it images, and I'm going to put VR Buddha inside. Okay, I refresh, bam, it's broken again. What? Because again, index.html is looking around it in the current folder and doesn't find anything. So we need to say, hey, don't look for VR Buddha, look for VR Buddha inside the images folder. And so we're going to change our code to images slash VR Buddha. This means there's a folder where you are. Inside that folder, there's a file called VR Buddha.png. I save it. I click. I reload. Bam, it's here again. OK. So what happens for images is that we need to have the path of the image. OK, so this is how images work. You give it the name, you give it the attribute of the source, and then you give the value of the source. We can put multiple attributes inside one element. Another very important attribute for images is this thing called alt. And I can say alt equals equals what? Well, alt is the alternative text that will be displayed if the image cannot be displayed. That's one possibility. Or it's what will be displayed for the specific browsers of people with disabilities who can't, who do not have the same site as the majority of users, right? Maybe they like have vision impaired, um, and so they have a specific software that allow, like, basically reads out loud what's going on on the web page. And so the software doesn't know what the image is. We need to say, well. This is a picture of a Buddha statue with a VR headset. It is a tribute to Nam Jun Pike. It's original piece, TV Buddha. OK, so now we have this long, long text inside the alt attribute. So I'm going to refresh, nothing really changed. What did change is if I put my mouse above the image and I wait for a little bit, hmm, usually the text appears in an overlay. Let's see. Yeah, the alt text is, the alt text is here, so I'm not sure why it doesn't happen on this particular browser, but usually it does. Let's see, wait, let's see on Chrome. Maybe Chrome is nicer. Go to the same page, hover above. Nope. Okay, well, I guess in regular browsers, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't display anymore. But let me show you an example of what this actually is. This is a very popular um, webcomic about technology. And most of the jokes are happening in the comic itself. But it also happens if you see this particular text. Right? 
So this little window, the AHA, also known as the Black Mirror Mythbuster scale, this is the alt text. Okay, alt text are very important for accessibility issues, even if you don't see them immediately. Uh, let's close Chrome. We don't need Chrome anymore. Cool. So we have one element, one attribute, the source, another attribute, the alt text. Everything's great. Let's move on to CSS. Actually, no. Before that, let's move on to generic elements. So those generic elements, there are two types. There's span and div. I'm not going to go in the di into the difference of these until we've gone into CSS. But what these are used for are basically just building blocks. So if you want to have something on your website that is maybe um, a piece of text that's just on the, on the right corner or it's an image that's only at the bottom or it's a header, then you want to have a whole container that contains all the information for your header, right? You want to have the name of your website, maybe like a home button, maybe a navigation, but all of it is within that box. And a box, in technical terms, is called a div. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a div. I open it, I close it, and I say, this is my div. Cool. I refresh it, I go all the way at the bottom, and lo and behold, this is my div. Why is this useful, you're saying? Well, it's useful when you start using CSS, okay? Which we're gonna do right now. Because this kind of looks, no, this looks terrible. This is a very terribly looking web page. Like, massive image, this link here doesn't mean anything, this is my div, is also absolutely invisible. So we need to have CSS. CSS exists in another file. So, we're going to do file, new file, and immediately we're going to save it, file save, and we're going to call it style.css. Okay. And the first thing that we want to do is make our image smaller, right? Let's say we just want to have an image that is 200 pixels height, okay? That's simple enough. And that allows us to see the anatomy of a CSS document. The way CSS works is that you have the selector here, which specifies which element the styling is going to affect. And then what kind of styling needs to be affected and these are going to be the attributes, and they're going to have values. Okay, this is how every CSS um, section looks like. But this is very, very generic. What we want is to have a specific case. So what element do we want to change, right? We want to change our image and make it so that the height is 200 pixels. So the selector, that's going to be the HTML element that we want to affect. And the HTML we want, uh, element we want to ha affect is this guy, img here. So we go back to style, and instead of selector, we're going to put img. Great. And then what's the attribute of img we want to change? Right? We want to make it so that the height is 200 pixels, and the attribute, therefore, is going to be height. OK. And then the value, well, 200 pixels. Cool. I save it. I click. I reload. Nothing changes. Why does nothing change? Because those two files don't actually know about each other, right? We're saying to style.css, hey, like whatever IMG, make it so that it's 200 pixels height. Um, and index.html doesn't even know there's such a thing as a file called style.css. 
And so this is when we come back to our metadata, to the head elements. In order to properly display our web page, we need to link those two files. We need to tell the index.html, hey, by the way, all the content that you have, you need to style it according to the rules specified in this particular CSS file. And so if we need to link it, we're going to call link. And then we need to say that it's a style sheet. What's the relationship to it? I don't actually know what rel means. I call it relationship, but it can be whatever. Um, and then href, which means where do you actually find that style sheet? And it's the same thing that with our image, we give the path to our element, to our file. OK, so we're saying, hey, link something. That thing is a kind of style sheet. And where you can find it is the file style.css. OK, I save it by pressing Command S. I go back to the browser. I click Reload. Bam! Now, what happened is that when the index and the when the index that HTML loaded, it found the style.css and it said, "Hey, whatever image you have, make it so that the height is 200 pixels." Cool. Okay. I'll post in the. Actually, I won't post it because it's already on the website. Um, there's the class website that has a lot of resources about what are all the different kinds of, of attributes that you can modify. There's a bunch. You can put, change it to like width, refresh, and now it's the width that is going to be 200 pixels. You can say width and height, and this one's going to be 800 pixels. And now it's completely distorted. Okay. If you only put one of those two attributes, only the width or only the height, your browser is smart enough to figure out that you actually want to keep the aspect ratio. OK, cool. So that's one problem solved. We figured out that this guy here, the image, is now decently sized. One thing that bums me still is this sort of like link, right? Um, the fact that they're next to each other, it's not so, so much fun. So what we're going to do is that we're going to write some CSS that takes the link and then makes sure that it goes above the image. OK. There are multiple ways we can do this. The one we're going to choose is to set um, the link to have a width that's the whole document, OK, so that the image is forced to go under it. So what we're going to do is first select so what is this click here thing again? Click here is an A. So we're going to say, hey, for the A, here are the rules that you should apply. And the first rule, we're going to have the attribute width equals, I don't know how big my screen is, like 1024px maybe. But we don't know, maybe my screen is different than yours, maybe I have like a MacBook Retina, maybe you have like an iPhone, maybe like someone else has like massive projectors, someone else has like Windows XP. So the best way to do this is to use relative measures and to say whatever the screen is, just be 100% of that screen. So we save, we click, we refresh, hmm. and nothing happened. Welcome to CSS. It's kind of tricky to understand. The thing here is that if we look at our inspector and we start to like examine these things, we see that the image is here, click here is somehow um, not respecting the rule, right? It's not saying like, it doesn't look like it's 100% wide. So maybe what we need to do is to tell it to display in a particular way. And we're going to say display block. So instead of acting like a line, it's going to act like a real block. We're going to save it, we're going to refresh, and now bam, it's acting like a block. It's acting like a block that has 100% width, right? You see the blue, the blue rectangle here? That's the whole width of our particular um, element, the A element. Okay, so far, so good, 
right? The last thing is, let's say I want to have another link, right? Like I have this link that says, click here to, to go to duck, duck, go. Cool. I refresh. It works. And then maybe I want to have a reference to the original piece, right? To the TV Buddha. So I'm going to Google TV Buddha. And Nam Junpeg's TV Buddha, public delivery, Buddha. Oh, there's a TV series about Buddha. Crazy. Um, this is a nice website. Media Art Net. Cool. Okay. It explains what the TV Buddha is. So I'm going to click on this link, copy it, and I'm going to set a new A tag below that says A. And then where do we want to go? We want to go to href. What's the destination? That's the URL I just uh, copied. Now I'm pasting it. And we're going to say click here to go to the original piece. Okay. Cool. I'm going to go back to my website, refresh, and now we have click here to go to the original piece. Sweet. But hey, maybe, maybe I want to put more emphasis on the fact that these are different websites, right? Like this is DuckDuckGo, this is just for uh, searching, and this is the original piece. What would be nice is if actually I could have this guy, the click here to original piece, in maybe like a different font or a different color, right? So the first thought is we're going to go to the style at CSS and we're going to say, hey, add a new rule and say color orange because I want my link to be orange. I'm going to refresh and now they're both orange, right? That's the issue. The issue is that this rule applies to every single A tag. Okay. So it's going to apply indiscriminately to the one here that goes to DuckDuckGo or to the one there that goes to the TV Buddha. How do we make the difference? We make the difference by having something called classes. And classes are a special kind of attribute. And essentially what a class does is that it allows us to keep track of which element is what, right? Because these guys are both links, but one is a link to a search engine and the other one is a link to an artwork. And I can differentiate them by saying, by giving them a class name. So I'm going to say class equals and then what is the name we want to give it? So in that case, it's going to be like TV Buddha link. And this part here is arbitrary. Like I could be TV Buddha link or link to TV Buddha. Doesn't really make a difference. Okay. And so now in CSS, I can, instead of referring to an A or to an IMG, I can refer to a class and I can say apply it to any element that has the class linked to TV Buddha. And the way we do that is by prefixing it with a dot. And now I can say link to TV Buddha. And whatever we write here, all this guy, this is all going to be applied to any element with the class linked to TV Buddha. And what I want is actually the color orange. So I'm going to delete it from the A and I'm going to paste it here inside link to TV Buddha. So any A tag, any link is going to still take the entirety of the width and any element, not just an A tag, which has the class link to TV Buddha, which we've written here, it's going to have the color orange. We refresh, and now bam. The DuckDuckGo link is a normal color, 
the TV Buddha link is orange. And then the cool thing is that we can apply classes to any kind of element. So if we do actually like that orange and we want it to be on the welcome, we can say welcome class equals link to TV Buddha. Okay? So now the header, the heading, has the class name link to TV Buddha. And the result is that if I refresh, welcome becomes orange. Because what happens is that the index.html loads the content, it finds the style sheet here. In the style sheet, it says whatever thing that has the class name link to TV Buddha, make it orange. And what happens is that this has the class name TV Buddha, this has the class name link to TV Buddha. Both of these become orange. And so what about what about just having like a div that's a little fun fact, right? We just put it on the corner right here, and that's just the fun fact that we want our users to see. What we're going to do then is we're going to give it a class name and we're going to change the attributes inside that class name to position it differently. Okay. So first thing is give it a class name. div class equals fun fact. Okay, what's a fun fact? Um, oh, I don't know if it's a fun fact. It's a nerdy fact, but it's a fun fact. Um, the only universal human word is ah. Right? There's only one word that's kind of the same in every single language in all of humanity, and it's huh? There's actually research on it. So world um, universal word huh? Yeah. Ha huh, is a universal word. And it's actually an original paper. So let's actually link to the paper, right? Let's do our research. Okay, we link it and go back to our website. And we can say find the reference. And then we link it by saying a href whoa, equals, this is the link, close it, and here. Sweet. Let's just check if it works. The only human word is ha, huh, find the reference here. Okay. But all of this, I want these guys to be on the top right. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do something, we're going to write some CSS that affects the class fun fact and positions it correctly. So we're going to do dot because every class in CSS starts with dot, dot, fun fact. And we're going to say width is going to be 300 pixels. And then position is going to be absolute. So it doesn't have to depend on where the other elements are, it's just absolute on the frame, on the window. Um, and so where do we position it, right? Like, is it like top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right? I want to put it at the top right. So I'm going to say the distance from the top is going to be zero pixels. And the distance from the right side is also going to be zero pixels. Essentially, that's the top right corner. We click here. We refresh, and then bam, our fun fact is here. And if I click on reference, I find the paper. Amazing. Let's do one last thing. This looks a little strange-ish, right? It's too close from the border, it's from the top, It's it looks a little cramped. If it's a little cramped, we want to have some sort of space, right? And space is called 
static. And we're going to say, you know what, put like a space all around of just five pixels. We go back, we refresh it, and now you see there's like at least five pixel space from the top to the beginning of the text. That's a little nicer. And we're going to add a border. And we're going to say, I want it to be like one pixel thick, I want it to be solid, and I want it to be black. I refresh, and then bam, now we have our little box. It's also still kind of like a little cramped, so maybe I don't want to be like zero pixel from the top, I want to be like five pixel from the top and five pixel from the right. Let's do that. Top, we change it here, five pixel. Right, we change it here, five pixel. We save it, we refresh, and now it's a little offset, now it's a little bit nicer. So that covers the fundamentals of HTML and CSS. HTML has a structure that has the HTML tag, the head tag, and the body tag. Everything that you write inside the body tag is what the user will see. It's the content. So all of your paragraphs, all of your links, your anchors, all of your images, all of your divs, these need to be inside the body. So before the closing element of the body. In the head, what happens is that we tell the index.html, we, we tell our, our HTML file to integrate a style sheet. And that style sheet then has rules for elements. It says all the IMG elements, give them a width of 200 pixels. All the A elements, give them a width of 100%. Whatever container it is in, make it as wide as it is, as the container. And then we have classes. Classes start with a dot, and they're defined by us. So what we've written here, class equals link to TV Buddha, class equals fun fact. And actually, I can just change that, right? I can say fact, fun, and if I refresh now, it goes back to normal, because we're saying that this guy is called fact fun, this guy is called fun fact. They're not the same. But if I change that to fact fun, I go back, I refresh, then the rule applies again. Okay, and now you have an exercise to do, which we'll talk about on the Discord of the class. Yeah.